Hey everybody, Dr. Sean Talbot here. Hopefully you can see me, there I am. Um, welcome to the Tuesday night call where we're gonna get going here in just uh, just a minute or so. Looks like we get about one more minute until we, until we hit the top of the hour. Um, we're going to talk about heart health tonight. It is National Heart Health Month. And we're gonna talk about how to take care of your heart, which is what we call your third brain. Um, so those are the things that we're gonna talk about tonight. I'm really gonna focus on two products in particular, omega-3 fatty acids in our omega product, uh, and then a variety of nutrients. Um, in our mental heart product and mental heart might make you know perfect sense to talk about on um on a on a heart health night but you know sometimes think sometimes people think of omega as more of a brain supplement than a heart supplement um and it, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna sort of talk people through why we 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 really can think of it as both um so here we're gonna talk about how our heart is our third brain uh we're gonna talk about heart health and omega threes and other nutrients to improve physical performance and mental wellness. So there are definite heart benefits, lowering your triglycerides, lowering your cholesterol, uh, improving your, your, your blood flow, uh, improving the, the, the stickiness of your blood, improving the, um, the, the ability of your blood vessels to open and close uh, in a dynamic fashion, which can be related to your, to your blood pressure. So there's a whole heck of a lot that we're gonna talk about specific to the heart, the third brain. Um, but the reason we call it the third brain is because if we can get your heart to be more, uh, more efficient is probably a good way to say it. We can actually use that as a way to enhance mental wellness, right? So we say a lot of times here at Amari, how you feel is not just in your head, it's also in your gut, but it's also in your heart, it's also in your immune system, it's also in lots of other places in your body. And we're really using the, 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 the newest cutting edge science to harness, to bring that to bear on this problem of mental wellness. So We'll talk about heart in the in, in the context of pure heart health, but we'll also talk about it in a in sort of a broader fashion about how that heart health is related to mental wellness. Um, so before we get into that, let me just let me find my cursor and then let me introduce myself to people who have not heard me talk before. Um, these Tuesday night calls, we call them deep dives because I spend about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half if I get really excited about something, um, talking about you know a, a particular area that's related to mental wellness. And so tonight it's heart health because it's, it's, it's National Heart Health Awareness Month, um, it, Valentine's Day also, you know, the heart. Um, so I, I've, I, I, I'm what's sometimes called a, um, a psycho nutritionist. Um, I, my PhD is in nutritional biochemistry. So I studied the linkage between nutrition and biochemistry. But then for the, about the last 20 years or so, I've been also looking at the linkage between food and mood. So you look at how the food changes the biochemistry, you look at how the biochemistry changes psychology. And when we look at psychology, we're measuring things around depression and overall mood state, uh, anxiety and tension, uh, brain fog and focus, um, something called psychological vigor, which is sort of a sort of a conglomeration of, of different mood states, physical energy, mental acuity, emotional well-being. Um, you know, we look at we look at a variety of different things, and that sometimes these days is called nutritional psychology. So that's the kind of work that I do. So when we talk about nutrients here, what I like to try to do is give people a perspective, not just that this nutrient will help you feel better, right? Sometimes that's all people want to know. I want to feel better. What do I need to do? And we can, we can get that across really quickly. But these deep dives are really a way that we can understand some of the mechanism of how that nutrient exerts its mental wellness benefit or its physical health benefit. And so a lot of what I talk about is how there's a linkage between the body and mind and things like that. So th th these, these, are the, these are the concepts that we're going to talk about tonight with a specific emphasis on heart health. So the first thing that I want to talk about this is one of my favorite products in in the Amari product line. Um, not not specifically because it's it's because it's so cutting edge and it's so revolutionarily different than anything else that's out there, but instead because it's something that almost everybody needs. Um, uh, whenever people ask me about what should they supplement with, uh, 
Omega-3 fatty acids are at the very top of my list for a couple of reasons. They do a lot of healthy benefits in the body and most people are very deficient in them. And so it's a, it's a, it's a place that we can fill a gap that really needs to be filled. So you can see here, you know, the sort of marketing slide for Omega. We call it Omega because we're the mental wellness company and we wanna really sort of emphasize Omega-3s for mental wellness. This specific specific blend that we have here not only supports cognitive health, the ability of the brain to do its job, it promotes memory recall, and it supports cardiovascular function, but it does a whole lot more than just that, and I'll show you a graph for that in just a second. What we've done here is we've, we've said, all right, omega-3s or fish oil products are fairly generic in the market. How can we make one that, 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 that stands out from the crowd and is uniquely Amari, is uniquely about mental wellness? So we, there's, there's, there's a couple of ways that you can do a, do, do a better fish oil. You can look at purity, you can look at potency, you can look at the ratios between the different omega-3 fatty acids, you can add other, you know, other sorts of things. So what we do is we have a sustainably sourced lavender infused fish oil that features a five to one ratio of EPA, that's one of the omega-3s, to DHA, that's another of the omega-3s, scientifically shown to support mental wellness. So we have a ratio of these omega-3s that is specifically geared towards helping with mood state, with mental wellness parameters, depression, anxiety, stress, those sorts of things. But even though that's our focus, just the fact that we're giving more omega-3s into your diet is going to give you some of those other benefits, chief of which is heart health. And so before, I should have shown you this slide first, before I even get into that, um, because it's National Heart Health Month, uh, our marketing and sales team is doing this. There's a, there's a promotion going on. Buy one, oh, buy two, get one free. And you can mix and match either, either of these heart healths. Um, I hope what you'll do is, you know, at, at, you know, at least, at least buy one of each and then, and then choose which one, which one you want to get free. You use the promo code here and it ends, uh, it ends later on this month. So what is today? Today's the ninth. So I guess this ends tomorrow. So chop, chop, go and get this, go and get this great deal. All right. So let's, let's, let's get into this a little bit. Why, why do we care about omega-3s in the first place? And even before, why do we care about them? What are they? So here are the structures of omega-3 fatty acids. Um, the the uh, omega-3 fatty acids are different than some other kinds of fatty acids, chiefly because they have, because they're unsaturated in a very unique way. So they have these double bonds. What these double bonds, so this is this is this is one of the omega-3 fatty acids, alpha linoleic acid, uh, alpha linolenic acid. This is EPA. This is DHA. So you can see that structurally they're very similar, but structurally they're different enough where it makes sense to get all three of them uh, in your in your diet. This unsaturated bond makes them a little more fluid than saturated fatty acids that don't have those double bonds, right? So without getting into the chemistry, why do you care about that? You care about that chiefly because that that sort of flexibleness, flexibility of that of that side chain. Whoops. I went, I went too far forward. Let me go back real quick. The flexibility of that side chain means that when it's incorporated into a cell membrane, that cell membrane is going to be more fluid. It's going to be more dynamic. So, so that's one piece of it. It's a, there's, a, there's a structural benefit to having at the level of your individual cells to having more omega-3s in your diet. There's also a, a very profound range of metabolic benefits to having more omega-3s. So here you see this, this, this abbreviation PUFA. This stands for polyunsaturated fatty acids. Acids, which of which omega threes are, are are in that category, uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids or PUFAs are important to have in the diet because they are involved in a variety of different metabolic reactions. They're important for managing inflammation and oxidative stress at the level of our mitochondria. They're important for overall systemic inflammation, and that's one one thing we're going to come back to again and again and again. Omega three supplementation is a wonderful way to get inflammation down. 
They're involved in gene expression. Uh, NF kappa B is one of the one of the uh, chief uh, uh, sort of master inflammatory switches in the body. And if you can modulate this, you can change inflammation throughout the entire body and every tissue. And that's important not just for the heart, but for the entire cardiovascular system. It's important for the brain because depression or uh, because inflammation is one of the big red flags that drives depression. So if you can lower the inflammation, very often you can get a handle on depression. Uh, this is the membrane mo a, a modification that I was talking about before. The membranes are more fluid. And if they're more fluid, their cells are more able to readily communicate with each other. And so that, that speaks to a whole channel of cellular signaling. Um, here you see that again. Um, and so omega-3s are doing a lot. And if we don't have enough of them, our, our, our membrane fluidity uh, suffers, our metabolism suffers, we might be more at risk for, for, for chronic diseases like heart disease, like depression, like dementia, uh, like certain forms of cancer. You know, so there really is a, 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 a heightened importance of having enough omega-3s in the diet. How much? What does that look like? Well, the recommended daily intake that you're going to hear from most of the you know, governmental organizations are going to say you need about one to two grams. Adults need one to two grams. Um, th that is, that, that's sort of a baseline minimum. What the newer research is showing is that optimal intake, so you have good brain function, so you have good heart function, so you have good stress resilience and, you know, uh, you know, dynamic resilience across your entire system, it's more like two to four grams. And there are even studies that show that, you know, some, somewhat more than that is even, is even more beneficial in special populations. This is not to say that more is always better. One of the things you need to be careful of with omega omega-3s, and especially with, with potent fish oil supplements, is that if you start supplementing too much, you just, you know, you see this and you go, well, one to two is good, and two to four is better, maybe four to six to eight to 10 to 12 is going to be even better, better, better. And it actually can, can get to a tipping point where too much of an anti-inflammatory effect can lead to bleeding problems. In, in certain populations, it might predispose to certain kinds of, um, of uh, you know, like, like uh, you know, bleeding strokes and things like that. So you don't want to overdose on these. Neither do you want to be deficient in them. It's very much a Goldilocks scenario where you want to be just right. And that just right for most people tends to be in this two to four gram range. And so with our, so knowing that, knowing that the science says that, that's why we specifically formulated omega to be really easy to deliver that. So for most people, taking two of these is going to get you right to this borderline around two grams. And so, you know, two, two, two of those is recommended serving is going to get you to the, to, to the sort of bottom end of optimal. And then if you wanted to do, you know, two at breakfast and two at dinner, then you'd be in that, you'd be, you know, up towards that four gram per day optimal intake. Okay. So that's, let me, let me, let me explain to you as I go through this description of omega, how we, how we got to that. So here are some of the very well substantiated by science uh, categories of places that, that we, that we just absolutely know that omega-3s are, are, are good for, and especially omega-3 supplementation to fill that gap because, mo you know, most of us are, most of us are very deficient. Uh, pregnancy and early life, brain and memory support, bone and joint and muscle support, cardiovascular support, eye health, metabolic support, liver support, and immunity support. Um, immunity is, you know, we've been talking about immunity now for over a year because everyone's so, you know, so immune focus during COVID. Omega-3s are actually one of the things that we think can not only directly support the immune system, but support the overall inflammatory cascade that seems to get out of whack in certain people who do get infected with, with COVID-19. So one of the big problems we know with COVID infections is that your immune system, first of all, isn't able to fight the infection, but then it overreacts later on and it either causes a lot of tissue damage damage then and can actually has led to a lot of those deaths or leads to some of these post COVID uh, like long hauler kinds of symptoms where you have this chronic inflammatory state later on. We think that, that, that having a better inflammatory response 
through having more omega-3s in your diet might be able to really help there. So you can see that the science here is very, very robust. There are lots and lots of, of, of direct clinical trials. There are lots of huge population um, um, trials, like, like epidemiological trials, uh, where we're looking and seeing that people who get more omega-3s in their diet do better. And so, you know, these are all, these are all important areas, chief of which our heart health benefits. So here are some of the big benefits that you're going to get from targeted omega-3 supplementation. And I'm going to, I'm going to get to the diet piece on the next slide. So lowering triglyceride levels, this is one that's actually FDA approved for very high dose pharmaceutical options around, around EPA and EPA DHA combinations. Um, there, are, there are drugs that you can get prescribed to you to lower your triglyceride levels. And tri triglycerides is just, a, is just a big way of saying fat in the blood. Um, so you know, a, a, some, some people have high cholesterol, some people have high bad cholesterol, some people have high triglycerides, uh, some people have all of those. And those are all risk factors for heart disease and stroke and heart attacks and things like that. Um, Omega threes can 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 also have a very good benefit here, reducing your risk of developing an an, uh, an arrhythmia. So this can help with irregular heartbeats. Um, I actually have a I have a palpitation of my own, and and I notice that if I am regular with my supplementation fish oil supplementation, I have a lot less of those skipped beats. Um, and if I, for, you know, whatever reason, if I miss my omega threes for a couple of days, I'll notice this coming back. You can slow down the rate of, of, of plaque uh, uh, buildup in your arteries and you can lower your blood pressure. Um, and it says slightly here. One of the things I love about this is that you can take a moderately high blood pressure where a lot of people are this sort of, you know, um, uh, borderline hypertension and bring it down to normal with omega-3 supplementation. What's great about that is that it typically doesn't drop you below normal. And so this is a very nice first line therapy for people who are on the borderline of your doctor saying, you know, hey, you've got a little bit of high blood pressure going on here. We might have to put you on a high blood pressure medication. And if you can avoid that, by, by using an omega-3, not only are you gonna get all the other benefits that are separate from just a heart health or, or a blood pressure benefit by supplementing, but you're gonna avoid all of the, um, all of the side effects that come with blood pressure medications. And, you know, those are, those are just, those are quality of life issues. You know, people on blood pressure medications very often complain of being fatigued during the day, having brain fog, you know, being, being sort of, you know, cloudy and muddled mentally and physically. And you just feel like you're, like you're sort of moving through a cloud all the time. That's a very, very common complaint for people who go on these blood pressure drugs. Uh, and if you can, you know, like I said, if you can avoid that by doing something natural with omega-3s, not only do you get that heart health benefit, but you get all these other benefits in your immune system and in your brain and it, it, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So can you get these from foods? Yes, you absolutely can get them from foods. You know, it, it, if we could get them from foods, we wouldn't need the supplement at all. But remember what I said just a few minutes ago, one of the reasons that I recommend omega-3s to almost everybody is because even if you're trying to get your omega-3s from foods, it's difficult. And so even if you're really sort of focused on it, there's very likely to be that gap between what you need and what you actually get. And for, for the majority of people, you don't even know where omega-3s come from in the first place, except from fish. And most people don't eat a lot of fish, especially the kind of fish that has omega-3s in it. And we'll get to that in a second. And so they have an even wider gap that needs to be filled with those supplements. And it, it's, it's, just a, it's just such an easy way to get them, get them into the diet. So here are some of the places that, 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 we, can, that we know we can get omega-3s. And these are graded, right? The number one source of omega, a plant source of omega-3s is flax seeds, right? You can throw a handful of flax seeds into your smoothies. You can sprinkle them on your, on your, on your yogurt. You can sprinkle them on your, on your oatmeal. You know, you can, there's all kinds of ways to use them. So you know, same with chia seeds, same with walnuts, same with all of these Seed, seeds and nuts and avocados and things like that are lovely, lovely sources of omega-3s. But the omega-3 that these all, um, kind of predominate in is the ALA that I talked about before. Remember the three that I showed you on the on one of the first slides, ALA, EPA, DHA. And that sounds like a bunch of alphabet soup. Um, they can be interconverted 
a little bit, but not very readily in humans. And so we, we, we want to be getting these. We want to be getting these in the diet, but they're not necessarily the best option to get you up to those two to four grams of optimal intake of omega-3. You have to eat a heck of a lot of flax seeds in order to do that. And, you know, because the conversion of ALA into, into the other omega-3s is not very efficient in most people, you're really not going to be able to get there with, with, with just vegan sources. Unless you're a vegan, right? So if you're not going to go to a fish source because you're just not doing animal products, even though it's, you know, even though it's fish, you know, when I was a vegetarian, um, I would, I would sometimes eat fish. I would sometimes eat eggs. You know, I would sometimes do a little bit of dairy um, just to get a little bit of what those, uh, those types of foods predominate in, you know, things like magnesium and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but if you're not going to go there, if you're never going to have any animal products at all, then, you know, these are, these are what your choices are. Right. And you have to, you have to sort of work with, work with what you have. So these are the top, what do I have on there? These are the top six that you have, um, but se seeds and nuts in general are going to, are going to do it. And so, so here, this is taken from the, um, from the National Institutes of Health website, showing you some of the some of the big food sources of ALA, EPA, and DHA, and see what see see what you know what I just said. You can see this now in in tabular fashion. The 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 seeds, the flax seeds and chia seeds and walnuts, etc., are really high in ALA, but don't really give you much of the of the EPA uh, DHA. There'll be a little conversion ALA into EPA, for example, but 10% efficiency, 15% efficiency in, in humans. So it's, you know, you really do, do need to be looking at, you know, look, looking at a supplement if you want to get up to those optimal levels. Where can you get a lot of EPA and DHA? That's where the fish comes in. And if you'll look here, you'll see the kind of fish that we're talking about. It's fatty fish. So, you know, th there's, there's one aspect of people saying, oh, I eat fish all the time. I love halibut. I love flounder. I love fill in the blank. And usually what they fill in the tilapia, whatever they fill in the blank with, it's typically a firm white fish um, that isn't particularly high in omega threes, right? So they're getting a good source of protein in that situation, but they're not getting a good source of the, of the omega threes that we're talking about here. The fish that is a good source of omega threes, you'll see salmon, herring, sardines, mackerel, trout, uh, some, sometimes tuna is on this list, uh, depending on the cut and things like that. Um, but when I mention those kinds of fish to people, people will kind of ugh, they'll make a face, they'll go, oh, that, I don't like those, those are fishy. I don't like the fishy fish. I like the, I like the, I like the, you know, the mild white fish. Well, my white fish is going to be a good source of protein, but not a good source of, of omega fatty, of omega three fatty acids. These fatty fish that taste oily and greasy to some people, those are a good source of these fatty acids, and that, that, that's that's why. Um, so if you're not prepared to eat these on a regular basis, several times a week. So you're, 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 you're still not going to be getting the amount of, of, of EPA and DHA that, that, that science tells us are the optimal levels. Look here, you're looking at a three ounce serving of salmon. You're only getting about, you know, you're getting at the, you know, the bottom, bottom end of, of, of optimal, right? You might get up to two grams of total omega threes. If you've got a good, healthy piece, of, piece of salmon there, and then it just goes down a little bit, you know, into the, into the smaller fish. Um, so even if you're eating fish, it's still going to be hard to get you to those optimal levels of, of, of omega threes. And then you've got the added layer of, where is that fish coming from? Is it being harvested sustainably? Is it farmed or line caught? Um, where is it being caught? Is it, it has it been tested for heavy metals or you know environmental contaminants like you know like PCBs and things like that? These are all things that these fatty fish um, can 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 really suffer from. So this is one of the reasons that even though omega threes are so important during pregnancy, during the, you know growing a growing a new baby, during the first few months of life, there are concerns about eating a lot of fish when you're pregnant because of you know mercury and lead and you know other contaminants that can concentrate 
in these higher food chain kind of kind of fish, you know, like the you know salmon and mackerel and swordfish and tuna and things like that. Um, so I'll 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 come back to that to that bit in a little bit. So let's say that you're that you're uh, that you're okay going away from vegan sources, uh, seeds and nuts. Let's say that you are you know you realize that you need more omega threes and you're not prepared to eat you know, fatty fish several times a week in order to, you know, get your, get your numbers up there. You know, the next, the next choice and the, in my opinion, the easiest choice for most people is to consider a fish oil supplement. And like I said earlier, fish oil is probably, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly genetic, uh, generic uh, commodity kind of a supplement out there. There's zillions and zillions of, 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 of options, of choices out there. And so you have to ask yourself what, you know, what, what are the, what are the attributes that I'm looking for when I look for a fish oil supplement? So I wanted to share this with you guys, um, just to, just for sake of discussion. This is something that I found American Heart Association recommends two to four grams of EPA DHA every day. You know, the optimal level that I, that I talked about on a, on a previous slide. Um, so this is a, this is a, a sort of an advertisement for a medical food called Vascazen. And this is a very concentrated um, source of omega-3s, DHA, EPA, um, very, very high potency capsule um, that is being you know, recommended for, for heart health. And the reason I wanted to put this up here is because I think they do a good job here of saying, look, you, can only, you only have to take these four pills and that is equivalent to three fish meals per day uh, every day of the week. And that is equivalent to, you know, 12 of the, you know, the standard supplement that's out there, right? So this makes the point in a, in a very short way of saying that potency is important. If we want to get people up to those two to four grams a day, we can't give you a low potency junky omega-3 extract, right? And there's plenty of those on the market. If you go to most of the big box stores or most of the pharmacies and you buy the cheap omega-3, you might get a gigantic jar of it for a, for a low couple of bucks. But what you're gonna get in there is each one of those soft gels is gonna be a low potency omega-3 extract. Meaning, let's say that each one of these pills is a gram, right? 1,000 milligrams. That's gonna be a pretty big pill in the first place. And if it's low potency oil, maybe only 30% of that is actually the omega-3s that we want. Only 30% of that typically is EPA and DHA. That's what a standard fish oil extract strength is. And so if you're thinking that, all right, I'm gonna take a gram, well, it's not really a gram of omega-3s, it's only 30%. So it's about 300 milligrams of omega-3s. That means if you want to get yourself up to this recommended two to four grams, you're taking 300, 300, 300, 300, 300. You're taking a lot of pills, a handful of pills in order to get yourself up to that level. So the solution is, why, why, why should we have it be 30%? Maybe we could make it 40% or 50% or 60% or 70%. There are pharmaceutical versions out there. One of them is called um, Vesepta. One of them is called Lovaza. These are um, very, very high concentrations, up around the 90% range, right? So, you know, they're going to a, a very synthetic, very purified delivery route so that they can, um, so they can give you either. So this one is EPA only. This one is a combination of EPA and DHA, but these are FDA approved for lowering triglycerides. And a couple of years ago, some of the pharmaceutical companies tried to file an injunction um, to make it illegal to have uh, uh, fish oil, like normal fish oil supplements out there. They tried to get these off the market because they were cutting into the business of, of these prescriptions. These are hundreds of dollars if you don't have insurance and they're, they're no more effective than using a good quality fish oil. In fact, there's more research, heart health research, brain health research, mental wellness research on regular fish oil as dietary supplements than there is as medical food or as there is as pharmaceuticals. You know, so I think that, you know, I, I, I see these commercials on TV sometimes and I'm like, 
why would somebody, if they knew any better, go for something like this when they can actually get a really, a really nice natural, you know, blend. And that's, and that's what we try to do with our, with our product. So let me go, let me go back up here for one second. So here's how we decided to do it. Knowing that purity is important, knowing that potency is, an, it, it is important. We actually chose a particular fish oil source and extraction uh, um, uh, method that delivers something that looks like this. When you hold it up to the light, it looks pretty much like water in those capsules. And that is indicative of the purity of the, of the, of the fish oil that we use. If you look out on the market, you can see all kinds of things from, from what, what ours looks like to light yellow, to, to sort of golden, to almost orange or, 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 or reddish. And that is indicative of what's, what's suspended in the fish oil. Ours takes on a little bit of a hue sometimes because we also have lavender oil in there, you know, so it doesn't look exactly like water, but when we, when we source the oil itself, you would look at it in a test tube and it's perfectly, perfectly clear. And then we put the lavender in there and it takes on a little bit of, a little of that, of that, of that purple hue. Um, so, so, um, Purity is one piece of it. And, you know, with ours, you can actually see the purity. So you don't have to spend five minutes like I just did to talk about why purity is important. You also have to think about where the source comes from. With those pharmaceutical sources, you have no idea where they're sourcing from. And very likely because it's a pharmaceutical uh, supply chain, they might be getting some of their fish from over here and some of it might be tuna and some of it might be sardines and some of it might be cod and some of it might be mackerel and some of it might be something else. And then what you've got is you've got, you know, this, this, um, this disparate uh, 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 source of raw materials that has to be uh, cleaned, that has to be uh, standardized. And so there's a lot of rigmarole that goes into making it standardized capsule to capsule to capsule. We took a little bit different approach. We partnered with a, with a supplier in Chile. And so we get, we get wild caught anchovies uh, from the South Pacific Ocean. We don't farm them. We don't try to mix it together with all kinds of other sources and then, you know, have to kind of clean it up on the back end. We start with really good, really pure raw material. And that makes our job easier once we do the extraction. So, you know, the, the, the other piece of this is that if you're using our source, anchovies, you're using fish that are, that are low on the food chain. That's important because of something called biomagnification. These fish, these tiny little fish are both small and have a short lifespan. And so they don't have enough time or enough body mass to, to accumulate the heavy metals and the PCBs and the environmental toxins that they might get when they're out there swimming around in the, you know, in the, in the big wild wide ocean. And so again, you're starting with a cleaner raw material here than if you're going up the food chain, so to speak. Once you go up here, not only do you have to, you know, standardize across the, the omega-3 content that you have, but you also have to start filtering out all the nasty stuff that's in there, the lead and the mercury and the PCBs and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So you, stay, staying down here just solves a lot of problems from a sustainability standpoint, from a purity standpoint. Then when we do our extraction, we can get to that high potency level and our potency level, I don't know if I have it on the next slide or not, our potency level is 70%, right? So remember when I said most of the fish oils on the market are 30%, ours is more than double the potency of most of the fish oils that you're going to see. And that's what enables us to really say to people, all you need are two of these fairly small soft gels. Sometimes you open up a fish oil product and you dump them out and you're like, Oh my gosh, are these, are, am I supposed to swallow these or are these suppositories? Because they're, they're gigantic. Ours, because it's such a concentrated oil, we're able to give you small pills, but in that small pill, we have a high concentration of those omega-3s and that's what you're supplementing for. There's no reason to take those big pills with all that other stuff if what you really want is the omega-3s. So purity, potency, but then we go another step and we bring together this idea of ratios, 
of the different omega-3s. We have a specific five to one ratio of EPA and DHA because that's the specific ratio that's been shown to be most closely aligned with mental wellness benefits. But here's the little hook. The reason that that blend is associated with mental wellness benefits is because it's profoundly anti-inflammatory. And so lowering inflammation is going to help with depression. Lowering inflammation is also going to help with heart health. So if we were Amari Global, the heart wellness company, we would, we would talk about this specific blend as being good for heart health. And the reason for it is that that little bit higher level of EPA upregulates a particular aspect of metabolism called CLPA2. When you do this, it lowers the inflammatory response. So this is the underlying mechanism here that gives us that anti-inflammatory effect that's gonna be good for the brain, mental wellness, and cognition, that's gonna be good for the heart, mental, uh, 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 you know, physical performance and circulation and blood pressure and all those sorts of things. We also see this, we also see that there's a, there's a reduction in neuroinflammation, not just in the brain, but across the entire HPA axis, which stands for the hypo, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, which is your stress response system. So if we can get that to be less under stress, there's an anti-stress uh, it, it, effect that goes throughout the entire body. And so this is one of the things that we talk about when we talk about the gut brain axis. We know that higher levels of EPA increase something in the brain called BDNF. This is brain derived neurotrophic factor. This helps us with neurogenesis, it's growth of new neurons, but it also is an antidepressive effect. We have found some data and I'll talk about this when I start talking about mental heart that mental heart can increase BDNF, there's a physical performance benefit of that and there's a mental performance benefit of that. So you can see where I keep coming back to this idea of if we're doing good things for the brain, we're doing good things for the heart. If we're doing good things for the heart, we're doing good things for the brain. That idea of this, of this heart-brain axis is a really, really new area of natural medicine, but it's something that we've been on the forefront of for the last couple of years now. Uh, and then clinical clinically studied that EPA concentration is a key player in brain cognitive health as well as cardiovascular health. So there's a lot of moving parts there, right? So we started off with good raw material, purity. We uh, uh, extract that in a way that can give you that really clear oil at a 70% uh, omega-3 uh, potency. So that speaks to the potency piece of it. Uh, the targeting of the ratios gives us a, a very profound anti-inflammatory effect that's good for the brain and good for the heart. And then we went this one more level of innovation to say, what else could we do? And we decided to infuse this with lavender. Lavender has a long history of use for anti-stress, for mental wellness, for relaxation, for calming, for mental focus, for acuity. You know, it's one of the, it's one of the probably most used sort of, you know, fo folklore sorts of, you know, sorts of medicinal plants that's out there. It's known to have calming benefits. It's known to have calming benefits in the gut. It's known to have calming benefits in the brain. It's known to have calming benefits in the heart to, to sort of get the whole system balanced and you know on an even keel and a really nice just day in the life kind of benefit that you get is you get no more fishy burps. So part of that is coming from the fact that we're using a pure oil. If you're using a 30% extract, like most of the most of the fish oils out there, when you know when you get a little bit of that burp, a little bit of that reflux, you're gonna taste that other stuff. If the more the it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be fishy, and you're gonna go oh gross. But if you can get a more uh, a, a, a more pure, a more concentrated omega three, that removes a lot of that a lot of that fishiness. But then infusing it with lavender removes you know re removes the rest of it. And I've heard so many comments from people who have tried this product. And if you if you do get the burp, it's a lavender burp, and that's hey, that's maybe not maybe that's not so bad, you know. So um, it's just a just a you know nice nice little you know additive thing that we're that we're able to do. Uh, and so last last piece, and then I'm going to move on to the onto the next aspect and talk a little bit about mental heart. Here's the here's the just a blow up of the supplement facts panel from the, from the bottle of uh, of omega. And what you see here is that the total omega three fatty acids are right right almost at that at that one gram level. So that 
that's why we say that two of these, the two soft gels is the, is the recommended serving size. That's going to get you right up to the, to the bottom of that optimal range, you know, in addition to whatever else you're getting in your diet, you know, maybe you, maybe you did have a serving of salmon, maybe you did have some flax seeds or some pumpkin seeds or some avocado or, you know, it was just Super Bowl weekend. So I hope you all ate tons of avocado in your guacamole, right? So there's other places that you want to get. You don't want to get all your omega-3s from supplements. Remember the supplements are there to fill the gap. And so, you know, you know, giving you, giving you a gram there is a, you know, is a good place, is a good place to get you. And you can, you know, supplement once a day or twice a day, or, you know, whatever you think you, whatever you think you need to, to sort of fill that gap. And this is, this is why we do this, right? This idea of the heart being our third brain. And so, you know, we had a little bit of that. We, 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 we had Omega, um, when we launched and we launched, started selling products in 2018, the, at the end of 2019, we introduced a really, really new way to think about this, right? So for the first year that Amari was in business, we really talked about this side of this graphic. We talked about the gut brain axis, right? And we talked about, we talked about these three touch points. The more research that we did around heart health, the more we found that this legitimately could be considered uh, uh, a third brain because what we did here had heart health benefits that, and we were able to document physical performance benefits and, you know, better energy levels and, you know, things like that physical performance. But what we found was that was there was also a linkage through this heart brain axis that improved mental wellness. And so that's why we talk so much now about having a second brain and a third brain in our gut and our heart. And, you know, this is something that, you know, we've, we've, we've known for, uh, we've observed that there is a linkage between these two tissues at least we knew this around the 1950s or so, right? So in the 1950s, there was talk in the medical literature about, about this observation, that people with depression had a higher risk for heart attacks and people with heart attacks had a higher risk for depression. So that was telling us that there was something going on between these two tissues where a problem in one led to a problem in the other. Um, and, and for years and years and years, we just thought it was inflammation, right? And inflammation certainly is a big piece of that, of that dynamic that's going on there. But what we've also found over the last couple of years is that it's not just inflammation, it's also electrical activity. It's also magnetic activity. It's also what we call resonance and coherence. And what we found in our trials was that if we could improve what's going on here in the heart, we could get a mental wellness benefit. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain a little bit of that to you. I'm going to gloss over some of the details because um, I've done deep dives about the heart brain axis before and you, you can you can go up to YouTube and you can you can find my YouTube page uh, and you can you, you know you can you can watch those you can actually sign up on my YouTube page for alerts so whenever I post a new video and I do that once or twice a week you'll you'll get a little alert that hey new video has been posted you can do the same thing at my blog when I put something up on my, on, on my blog if you're signed up you'll it'll come right into your email box and you can just read, read the blog there if you want to um, so so, you know, do, do go, do go sign up for those places. If you're interested in getting, you know, getting alerts when the, when the, when the new stuff goes up, um, the, so, so Sandy's asking a question. I'm going to answer this now from the, from the chat room. Let me say this. If you're following on zoom and you've got questions as we're going through here, put it in the chat room. If you're following on Facebook and you have questions, put it in the comments. And I don't, I don't watch the comments on Facebook as I'm live streaming into Facebook um, from Zoom. But what we'll do is we'll go back and either myself, uh, Michael Quatch from the R&D team, somebody from the customer experience team, um, we'll, we'll go in there and answer your questions. Or a lot of times, by the time we even get in there to answer them, Somebody else from the Amari family has has you know answered answered your questions or provided a resource or something like that. So if you have the questions, let us know them. Um, so Sandy's asking is is this a is the serving size that we have on here on Omega is that appropriate for teens? And it is. Um, all of the products that we have have a serving size that is appropriate or that is that is geared towards an adult. 
which means 18 and over. But then you get into a little bit of a gray area when you've got, let's say, a 15-year-old that is as big as an adult. Do you, you know, do you give them a kid's dose, which you know sometimes is half of a dose, um, or do you give them a do you give them a full adult dose? Because kids and teenagers are so um, deficient in omega threes and need omega threes so much for 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 brain health and for heart health and for anti-inflammatory effects. Um, it's really, really important for them. So for teenagers, if they're able to swallow capsules, I would use the same exact adult dose that you that you have on here. So you know with my kids, my kids well, my kids are are almost not teenagers anymore. I've got a 19 year old and a 21 year old. Um, I would recommend the the 19 year old to do a to do an adult dose. Um, but you know you have to you have to be able to and, and then as you get younger and younger and younger you're still going to want those omega-3s on board, but then you've got the issue of can they swallow a soft gel and, you know, choking risk and, you know, all that kind of stuff. We have tried to do kids versions of omega-3s and it's really difficult for us to do it um, because, be, because of the, you know, because of the oily nature, because of the, you know, the potential fishy taste and things like that. It's something that we're working on so we can get a kid's version. So if you can't swallow, uh, swallow a swallow a soft gel. You could suck down a pudding, or you could take a gummy, or you could. But the challenge with those as delivery mechanisms is that it's hard to get enough load in there, right? You it, it, once you get up to those higher levels of EPA and DHA, higher omega three loads they start to taste oily and fishy and greasy and it's not a very good user experience. So, you know, we're still, we're still trying. Um, and hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to, we'll be able to crack that code. So anyway, we've known a little bit about this, about this linkage between the heart and the brain for a long time. And so we've done a series of studies and what we've been able to find is that we can deliver a heart health benefit and a brain health benefit and a psychological mood state benefit all at the same time because of the connection across the heart uh, across the heart brain axis and and we've 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 published we've published papers about this uh, peer-reviewed scientific uh, journals. We've done scientific presentations around the globe. You know, we've done deep dives about this kind of stuff, um, and it's a it's a it's a really cool effect, I think, because we have the anti-inflammatory effect. Where I'm really not going to talk too much more about that because I did that I did that with omega. With with mental heart, we've got some of the anti-inflammatory effect, but what we're really trying to do is improve the electrical signaling between these two tissues. Um, I just saw this today um, in my email from a, from an organization called uh, the Heart Math Institute. Uh, we've actually worked with them to do some of our trials around heart rate variability um, and looking at the electrical conductance of heart. Uh, and I just thought this was 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 just a cool thing that I wanted to share with you guys. Um, so this is looking at resonance or coherence of heart rhythms between a boy and his dog. And this is a really cool experimental design that just, I think, illustrates the fact that there is a linkage between the heart and the brain. What they did was they measured heart activity in, in the dog and the boy when they were separated from each other in separate rooms. And you can see that these are, you know, here's the heart rhythm in the dog, here's the heart rhythm in the boy. They're sort of, you know, jaggedy messes. Then they brought them both into the same room. They didn't touch, the boy didn't go over and scratch the dog and say, oh, you're a good boy or good girl, Mabel, and nothing like that. They were just in the same room and the, and, the, and the boy was thinking nice loving thoughts about the dog. The dog, and the boy picked up on each other's emotions, basically. And that was reflected in their heart rhythms. So the boy was thinking happy thoughts. The dog was seeing the boy and that gave the dog happy thoughts. And they were happy to see each other. They were happy to be near each other. They were happy to be in each other's sort of universe. And then you can see that the heart rhythms changed and you can see the similarity between these rhythms that's what I mean by resonance or coherence. There, this ele these electrical activities synced with each other, and then when they when they when they went back into their separate rooms, they went back to the jaggedy, you know, isolated individual patterns, right? So this kind of thing we've been able to observe in humans when you're in groups, when you're with each other, when you're having a really good conversation, when you sync with somebody or you click with somebody. 
this is what's going on. So it's this kind of research that we were able to use when we put together our, our, our mental heart formula. And so we can, we, you know, based on some of the, some of these kinds of studies, we did our own series of studies. We presented one, one of these studies at the American College of Sports Medicine meeting this past summer. And you can see, you can see the title here, Optimization of Heart Brain Axis Signaling Improves Mental and Physical Performance. So I've done a whole deep dive about this particular um, uh, uh, block of research. And so you can go, you can go see the deep dive about that and all the graphs and things like that. But the bottom line is that we were the first ones to show that we could improve physical and mental performance across this heart brain axis. So we're getting all of the heart health benefits that you would expect. We're lowering oxidative stress. We're having an antioxidant effect. We're lowering inflammatory stress. We're improving the actual conductance uh, efficiency of the heart muscle. So it's more efficient beat by beat by beat. So it's pushing out more, it's pushing out more blood. It's able to regulate its pressure. Uh, you have better uh, blood vessel compliance, which is that idea of your blood vessels being able to open and close efficiency. Uh, you're having a benefit on supporting healthy cholesterol levels. Uh, you're getting a, a benefit in cardiac output. That's what I was just explaining about the heart being a more efficient pump. Um, and, and, you're, and you're getting benefits around blood sugar control as well, which can be, if it's out of balance, can be particularly toxic to blood vessels, to your heart. Um, in fact, that's one of the reasons that diabetics are so prone to heart problems because of their blood sugar problems that leads to damage in the cardiovascular system, which leads to plaques, which leads to you know, circulatory problems, et cetera, et cetera. So when we put together Mental Heart, we were trying to solve all of these very specific heart health problems around oxidative stress, inflammatory stress, pump, you know, pumping ability, et cetera, et cetera. But what we found was that once we improved the efficiency of that heart muscle of that tissue, we got a benefit there. But just like when we get a benefit in the gut, the benefit doesn't stay in the gut. Same thing. The benefit didn't stay in the heart. It, 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 it emanated out into other aspects and especially, especially mental wellness, which, which we were actually able to, able to quantify, you know, so heart health, we're looking at heart rate variability. This is a really, really cool, um, uh, parameter health parameter that is just starting to bleed into the, into the mainstream. So if you've got an Apple watch, if you've got a Garmin watch, if you've got a Fitbit, you know, the, some of the, some of these devices will measure heart rate variability. And there's all kinds of ways that you can slice and dice the data that you get from heart rate variability. So Heart rate variability, just to quickly define that for people, it's not your heart rate, which is beat, 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 beat. So we can measure your heart rate. How many times does your heart beat in a given interval? Like a, you know, like a minute, for example, we can say, you know, your heart rate is 60 beats per minute. Heart rate variability is a measurement of the, of the time in between each one of those beats. And the more variable that is, short here, long here, intermediate here, short, long, 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 short, 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 short. The more that variability is higher, the healthier your heart is because what it is, it's a, it ends up being a measurement of the heart's dynamic resilience. Can your heart respond to whatever stressors you're under um, on, on, a, on, on, a, on, a, on a millisecond by millisecond basis? And so heart rate variability is being built into some of these devices to measure stress, to measure sleep patterns, to measure psychology, to measure physical performance, to measure recovery in athletes. It's a really, really cool parameter. And we're able to show with our mental heart that heart rate variability is significantly increased after exercise. And we used in, our, in the particular trials that we did, we used, we used extreme exercise as a physical stress and a psychological stress to put our subjects under to see if we could to see if we could ruin their heart rate variability and with meant to heart they were able to maintain that so increased heart rate variability is cardio cardio protective people with better uh, with higher heart rate variability are much much 
protected from heart attacks and strokes. People with low heart rate variability have a much, much heightened risk of having one of those, one of those cardiovascular events. So it's a really, really interesting measurement. And we were able to correlate changes in this heart rate variability with changes in psychological outcome. People, people felt better. So there's a brain health benefit here too. Remember I said something before about this thing called BDNF. We know that omega-3s and specifically the EPA type of omega-3 because it has an anti-inflammatory effect or maybe not because it has an anti-inflammatory effect or in addition to its anti-inflammatory effect, there is an increase with EPA supplementation of BDNF. We also found that with supplementation with mental heart. And so let me go back real quick to show you the mental heart um, ingredient profile, you notice here that we don't have um, omega-3s in here. We have other kinds of oils. We have, we have this, this black cumin seed oil. Um, we have astaxanthin, which is, a, which is an oily kind of a, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a carotenoid, but it comes in an oily matrix that's, that's derived from, from algae. Um, so you can see we don't have any omega-3s in here, and yet we're getting uh, an anti-inflammatory effect, and we're getting an increase in BDNF levels. So we're seeing complementary mechanisms here, which I think is one of the reasons you would want to you would want to you would want to combine these two supplements. You would want to supplement with mental heart and supplement with omega-3s at the same time. So supplement with mental heart and supplement with omega. There is some data out there, and we're actually trying to confirm this with some of our own measurements right now, that, that, that black human seed oil, and specifically the brand that we use, Thymoquin, this is, the, this is the purest form of black human seed oil on the market. This seems to synergize with omega-3s in terms of two things that we know of so far anti-inflammatory effects and blood sugar controlling effects. We think there's also an immune system effect there, but that's something that we're, that we're still trying to tease out. So that's, a, that's an example of where we can use these nutrients separately to get benefits, but then we can use them in concert or combination with each other to get these synergistic benefits. And, you know, it's not just synergy because I'm saying this is a cool benefit and that's a cool benefit. And wouldn't it be great if we had them together? Synergy is when we actually do the trials to see what does palm fruit bioactives do and what does thymoquin do and what does astaxanthin do and et cetera, et cetera, separately, separately, separately. And then when we add them together and then we add as two, and then these two, and then we add them together as these three. And that was the process that we went through to get to where we, where we eventually landed with mental heart to be able to demonstrate the heart rate variability benefits, to be able to demonstrate improvements in BDNF and therefore uh, psychological mood state and cognitive benefits, to be, able to, be, to be able to deliver these benefits that you could broadly call healthy aging benefits, where we're lower, lowering oxidative stress, where we're lowering inflammatory stress, which allows your body to age more appropriately, or what we call successful aging, so that you're not over-inflamed and then aging faster, what we call inflammaging these days. So, you know, inflammaging can come from being over-inflamed or it can come from being over-oxidized. And those very often are a chicken and egg scenario. But what they, if you have high levels of either of those, what it means is that your, is that your tissues are going to be breaking down faster. And as a result of that, you're going to be aging faster. And you'll You'll, you'll feel that, right? You'll feel it in terms of your energy levels. You'll feel it in terms of your ability to focus. You'll feel it in terms of your, you know, your, your physical mobility and, you know, uh, ability to get around with or without pain and stiffness and things like that. So this is very much a quality of life benefit that we can deliver by giving you the right omega-3s, giving you the right, you know, other nutrients to really get this heart-brain axis optimized at the same way that that we're optimizing this gut brain access. And man, if you could bring all of this together under one umbrella, like what we've done here at Amari, that's a completely different way of thinking about how we get people to feel their best and perform their best. So we started out to say, hey, we're the mental wellness company. And you know, we've been doing this now for four years, selling products for three years, and we're going into a time in history with, with like without overstatement, there is no time that I've ever been alive that where there's been a greater need 
for mental health solutions than now, right? It was a big, big problem a year ago before we went through this dismal pandemic. But now think about where we are. Think about where people are in terms of their overall mental health. Think about where they are in terms of their overall physical health. Think about where they are in terms of just how they feel every day and how they how they show up in the world. If we can, if we can deliver physical health benefits to them in the form of heart benefits and gut benefits, and if we can use those to improve how they feel psychologically and how they perform mentally, that's what people are looking for these days. And there's some really, really cool ways that we can do it around the newest science. And so that's what gets me excited. That's why I do these deep dives. Uh, we just barely went over the hour mark tonight. So I'm going to shut it down there. I don't see anything in the in the chat room except for a couple of comments. So I'm going to wish everybody a happy Heart Health Month. And I'm going to I'm going to say next next week we're doing some really important meetings at Amari, and you're going to see some some cool announcements coming out. So you know, check in with the with the places that I gave you before where where you can subscribe. Go hit the Amari Facebook pages. Uh, we've got some exciting things coming. You know, around around this whole idea of uh, naturally improving mental wellness for everybody. So thanks for joining me tonight, you guys. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.